All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today it's hammer time. Okay, for my older viewers that remember the 80s and 90s, yes, it's hammer time. We're talking hammers. What hammers do you need as a beginning technician? And do you really need fancy hammers? All right, so we're talking hammers. You got the old school ball peen hammer with a wooden handle. This versus this, the fancy snap-on, computhane, dead blow. Do you really need this? No. This is a chunk of metal. For years, I used two hammers that were from Ace Hardware. I've since given them away, but you don't need stupid fancy hammers. Now I have stupid fancy hammers because, well, I buy tools and I like orange. It is what it is. Now what do you need? And actually, one of the biggest ones I recommend, I don't actually own anymore. <laughs> this set of blue point hammers, I bought a whole set back in the day and I've given them away to younger techs over the years that didn't have proper hammers. So the only one I have left is my 48 ounce. This can be a little uh, damaging for young technicians simply because it does a lot of damage when you miss. So that's why I still have it. But what hammers do you really need? Definitely you need a decent selection of ball peen hammers. You don't need anything else other than ball peen a dead blow or a soft blow and some sort of brass. When it comes down to it, you need a Thor, a 48 ounce, a 32 ounce, and either a 16 or an eight ounce. Now, as you can see, I don't own, this is literally is the three ball peen hammers I currently own. I realized pulling them out for this video that I don't own a 32 ounce, which I'm recommending and I don't own it. I don't own a 16 ounce either, but we'll talk about why here in a minute. But definitely you want a good selection. Now this little one comes in really handy because it is so small. Now, now again, it does not have to be the fancy snap on, but a little jeweler's hammer or something like this comes in surprisingly handy. The other day I was helping Cole line up a steering rack and it just did not want to move. This was the perfect hammer to give it a little persuasion to get it moving and we got it lined up and was able to put the bolt in. So this is definitely something I can recommend having in this size. Again, don't have to do the snap-on. Side note on these, these are no longer made by Trusty Cook. They are now made in-house by Snap-on. Snap-on and Trusty Cook went separate ways, I think after their patents ran out, uh, but they are no longer made by Trusty Cook. You can buy other companies sell Trusty Cook who, by the way, invented these dead blow hammers. These dead blow hammers and these. I believe the Matco is still Trusty Cook, but don't quote me on that. But why do I not own a 32 ounce? Well, it's because I own a 32 ounce snap-on brass hammer. I love these hammers. They get beat to snot and they come back for more. I've redressed the heads several times and when they get bad enough, I will get them warrantied. Side note, we now have a snap-on dealer brand new to the industry, so we'll see how that goes, but I definitely think you need some sort of brass hammer, whether you do a 32 ounce like this, or I also have a 24 ounce. Honestly, I bought this because that's what Andrew had years ago when he, I saw him using this and said, I need one of those, and bought one, and then found out they had a 32 ounce, so I bought one of those. Definitely one of my go-to hammers all the time. Getting ball joints to separate, hit the control arm a few times with this. You can really get on it and don't have to worry about screwing up the arm. As long as you don't miss and hit the ball joint, 
you should pop it loose. That's primarily what I use it for, but definitely something you should definitely have. Dead blow hammers. Again, you can buy these through Trusty Cook. Rubber mallets and that kind of stuff, I'm not real big on. Rubber mallets just tend to, to deteriorate after a couple years and wind up falling apart, etc. cetera. Um, you can buy these from Trusty Cook. I'll put links to some of these hammers in the description or in the uh, comments. But you can buy these from Trusty Cook and it's basically a bar welded to a cylinder capped that has lead shot in it and a soft non-marring surface. So when you want to hit something and not mess it up, i.e. putting a control arm in, putting a, trying to get a CV axle to seat, this is what I use. Now I have a small one because every now and then you need a little, little, little. Comes in handy just like the little ball peen. It can go in places the big boy doesn't. Now this is a 45 ounce, I believe. I would assume from the part number D, uh, DB450 that it's 45 ounces. If you're going to buy hammers, you need hammers, get you a Trusty Cook. Again, I'm pretty sure this is made by Trusty Cook. Dead blow hammer in this size, 45 ounces or so. A good ball peen hammer. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be anti-vibe, none of that stuff. It's a chunk of metal on a handle. That's pretty much it, you know? The only time, issue I've ever had with hammers is when I've missed and tore up the handle. And I would recommend some sort of brass in the 24 to 32 ounce. So basically you can get away with three hammers. Now, as you can see, that's what I get away with. I, this literally on the ta on the my roll cart is all the hammers I own. I don't own any more hammers than this. So you don't need a huge selection of hammers. You just need a good whacker, you know, a Thor, you know, Mjolnir, you know, one big sucker, a dead blow, and a brass hammer. That's all you need. I hope this video was helpful, and as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.